हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम गौतम चैटर्जी आई एम द डायरेक्टर ऑफ अभिनव गुप्ता एकेडमी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल फिल्म स्ट्रक्चर लैंग्वेज एड्रेसेस लिरिक्स एंड डायलॉग्स अंडर द पेपर वेमेन मीडिया एंड फिल्म द एम ऑफ दिस यूनिट इज टू कास्ट लाइट ऑन द यूज ऑफ लैंग्वेज इन फिल्म रिगार्डिंग वेमेन this will be seen in terms of film structure and its language and how films portray women using words and symbols in shooting and editing after having an understanding of male gaze as used in films we will discuss here film language as an art and how filmmakers use it for views this module explores certain questions like have women been shown as a sex object or has there been an evolution we will see this is components of film making process seeking pleasure is a primitive human instinct a film offers a number of possible ways to satisfy this instinct one is scopophilia that is pleasure drawn by the looking when we think of a film we first think of a visual and not a sound scopophilia is a term coined by the art historians and the observers who find that there exist a pleasure principle all the time working in the mind of the audience audience goes to cinema hall just to find pleasure that is entertainment principles of aesthetics through the art aesthetics but this is not so for the serious filmmakers pleasure or entertainment is not the first object to fulfill through the cinema art their first and foremost thing is idea we must know there are two kinds of films first is the entertainment commercial cinema second is the classic cinema the classic filmmakers who always try to put forward to put it his own views to share his own ideas with the audience of the world they never reproduce the reality already happened so the pleasure principle is cancelled in the classic cinema we watch a film accompanied with other senses we do this instinctively we see magic in the form of visuals on the screen that resemble our reality and we draw pleasure from it this magic never fails yes cinema is a magic and it goes on and on and on still we are mesmerized by this magic the cinema we look at the figures on the screen and continue to gaze on the visual shown a viewer then wants more pleasure more appetite for which never ends a filmmaker takes up the task of keeping the viewers glued an artistic image is not always an image full of pleasure it can be an image of inspiration many times we find a serious social issue raised in a film yes we may find the existence of an aesthetic poverty in the film poverty but using the aesthetic principles that is very important very significant the issue related to women is one of the major social issues discussed globally we wish to have healthy aesthetically enriched films here we will discuss how the filmmakers have been presenting women and women issues in films and of course before that we will first learn the language of cinema for film is an art that uses language it has evolved over the last 100 years we have a list of serious filmmakers who have given their best to treat women with dignity in films they try to make people understand the seriousness of being in relation with a woman film structure 
Making a film is a creative process that follows an assumed structure and is expressed through film language. Regarding this, in film language, the structure comes first followed by film theories. Structure, the literary term. The word structure in general means arranging parts of something complex and establishes interrelations among them. We make a structure of a theme to make it simple and methodical. It has been used in making films since its beginning. Now it has become a literary term. A word gets converted into a term when there is a theory or a philosophy behind it. The word structure has now been converted into a literary term called structuralism. Structuralism in general is an attempt to apply linguistic theory to object and activities. Literally, structuralism flourished in the 1960s and was applied to study literature by Ferdinand de Saussure. Did you know? Structuralism flourished in the 1960s and was applied to study literature by Ferdinand de Saussure. In order to make the structure of a film more profound, filmmakers apply structuralism in their production. This theory goes with semiotics to understand the meaning of science. Film scholar Gaston Roberge in his book The Subject of Cinema writes, Film theory is also only a part of the larger theorizing activity of semiotics. The film theoretician has a special relation with film science. Understanding cinema helps in understanding the whole universe of science. Language, semiotics and syntax. Now, in order to connect the issue of women in films, with the background of viewers' desire to draw pleasure from the act of watching, we are entering the domain of language or structural language which consists of semiotics and syntax. You would like to see how the science of science works in film structure and how general viewers decipher those signs. Interesting? It is more semiology as Sashur like to call it for it is part of social psychology. There are two more important terms related to the discussion. They are signifier and signified. The idea, the content is always signified and through what means, means signifier. The image on the screen is signifier, which carries the meaning and intention behind the image. That meaning is termed as signified. A close-off of a revolver is signifier and what intends to convey is the signified. Christian Mates said, A close-up of a revolver does not signify revolver but signifies something beyond this. This is the language of sign as image that is to be connected to a screenplay. Our departure point of this unit speaks of film intention because intention is the key term. Intention intensifies the film process, the filmmaking, the direction. The cinema satisfies a primordial wish for pleasurable looking or for pleasurable looking. The conventions of mainstream films focus attention on the human form. What pleases us is not always cinema because the motive of cinema is like mass, mass communication to inform, to enlighten and to entertain. Scale, space, stories are all anthropomorphic means idea in the form of human. In a long essay, Laura Mulvey writes, curiosity and the wish to look intermingle with a fascination with likeness and recognition. The human face, the human face, the human body, the relationship between the human form and its surroundings, the visual presence of the person in the world. Lacan 
has described how the moment when a child recognizes its own image in the mirror is crucial for the constitution of the ego. The mirror moment predates language for the child. He continues in his research paper, in a world ordered by sexual imbalance, pleasure in looking has been split between active male and passive female. In their traditional exhibitionist role, women are simultaneously looked at and they displayed with their appearance coded for strong visual and erotic impact so that they can be said to cannot to be looked at ness. Mainstream films neatly combine spectacle with narrative. The presence of women is an indispensable element of a spectacle in normal narrative film. Yet, her visual presence tends to work against the development of a storyline to freeze the flow of actions in moments of erotic contemplation. When once asked to Noam Chomsky if there was a connection between language and sexuality as Jax Lacken had posited in his history of subjectivity, Chomsky replied, yes and no, both. Semiotics is whatever it is. The issue of innateness of language is a curious one. Semantics is the study of relations and part of mental representations. Here we can find the connection between language and sexuality. In the same breath, we can remember Jean Francois Lyotard words, who is the forerunner of postmodernism encapsulated in his book, The Different, where he talks about aesthetics and about the issues of language and sexuality, its innateness and portrayal of women in art. The Different is very significant book, constantly oft quoted and constantly significant. Definition wise, syntax in linguistics is the set of rules principles and processes that govern the structure of sentences in a given language. It is obvious that a filmmaker never goes through these language principles, semiotics, semantics and syntax before going to select a story or before going to make a film. But the language pattern in his subconscious mind shapes his language of expression, his intentional images. Images and intentional images, there are, these are two signified words, very important. Intentional images means what is the intention of the filmmaker through the image. That is why we are going through all these literary terms. Even all film theories discuss these terms to initiate the reference point of film writing, as explained by Laura Mulvey's research paper on this topic. Short sequence light props and process of editing. As we are studying, though in brief, the behavioral pattern of brain and the language pattern of mind in order to unfold the intention behind a film is mainstream cinema besides exploring why and how a film depicts women in disgraceful manner. We will include here other elements of film that too have roles to affect the image building. That is, to make the spectacle for impact. A frame is the basic unit of a film. Several frames make a shot. Many shots make a sequence and several sequences make a film. Filmmaking goes through the stages of pre and post production. In film shoot, director needs to assemble not only film apparatus but the collective and connected minds active behind all apparatus. For example, a mind behind camera another mind behind the light. Now all these minds have to obey and follow the director, the captain of the ship. Camera angles has to be set accordingly. Focus of light has to accompany the camera and these professionals must work in one symphony with the director. What he thinks about his society and about women is to be shown in his film. He sets in his mind what the audience demands. He sets forth the spectacle, the intense image of the female's presence and gives language to female 
and male characters. Did you know? A frame is the basic unit of a film. Several frames make a shot, many shots make a sequence and several sequences make a film. During the entire year-long shoot, all technical eyes remain active according to the mental eye of the director. Before the start of editing of that film, director has to complete all shoots. He can reshoot if it is needed, but rarely this happens. While the editing is on, he cannot improvise or change the shots. As he feels so, he concludes. In this entire process, his intention to portray women is clear. So everything takes place accordingly. It is the intention of the director how he would portray a woman in his cinema. The pleasure principle works predominantly. Through the editing process, the master director tells the story. This is how one structures one's own impulses to make a film to satisfy one's own pleasure impulse and share the same with masses. Place of Women in Films After going through the film language and its structure of a film, now let us discuss some films which are important and made names worldwide in the last hundred of years. In films like a novel, a woman has an inevitable presence like a man. Here she is inverted commas for we are discussing how films depict a woman on the big screen. We can remember or recall a film, The Bridge Over River Kwai, where we can see no women on the screen. Very interesting. This is the film without a woman, without a woman presence. Now, in other films, she is there to offer pleasure to the eyes of the masses in the various sensuous ways. Here is a but. The case is not the same in the world classics. Let us have a look. World classics. In the last hundred years, cinema has evolved in many ways. Some of these ways are intellectual, psychoanalytical and philosophical. Since it is an art medium, filmmakers believe that this medium cannot be only for entertainment. Serious filmmakers strongly put forward the idea of awakening in society through films. One such an idea of awakening towards the inequality in society is of gender or other social issues. Filmmakers in classic films seem eager to communicate artistically their own perspective to audience. A classic film is one which shares a deep perspective with serious students of cinema. It shows its deep concern for all people. It wishes to change the mindset of the society. It invites the people to enter the zone of the filmmaker. It tries to do so through the script, dialogues, expression, movement, silence and visual angles. It wishes to wipe out cruelty, hatred, lust and other contents of man that destroy the whole emotional ecology of mankind and also distorts the poetry of human soul in a society. We can make a list of over five dozen great masters who made classics and who showed wonders about human mind. Here we can take, for example, at least four classic films, directors who were able to transform the vocabulary of human mind. They are Robert Brisson, Igmar Bergman, Satyajit Ray and Andre Tarkovsky from France, Sweden, India and Russia respectively. Here we will discuss some scenes from their respective films related to our topic. A Gentlewoman is a film by Bresson, based on a novel, A Gentle Creature, authored by Fedor Dostoevsky. The story of film moves around a woman who has committed suicide. From the very beginning, it discusses the different states of her mind in relation to society and emotional life. The female protagonist with her constant sad face never looks sensuous in any shot unlike all commercial mainstream films. The most of the films of Bergman deal with female subconscious. From shot to shot, each and every moment tries to reveal her subconscious mind. Both inner and outer personalities of a woman are an issue for Bergman. Persona, face-to-face, -face, 
Autumn Sonata, Cries and Whispers, The Shame, Faith Trilogy, and Saraband for TV are his representative films. In these films, we find the mind of the audience and the mind of the filmmaker converging at the depth of silence. The Silence is a film that is the part of Faith Trilogy. From the very first shot of The Silence to the last, Johan's inquisitiveness and unrelenting hunger for meaning in life bind together almost everything we see on a screen. Even the unhappy sexual acts of his mother and his aunt are shown to us within the context of Johan's desire to understand what their behavior signifies. Religious quandaries and nature of love are his other concerns. Irving Singer, a scholar of Bergman cinema, writes in his book Cinematic Philosopher about his film Persona at length. He writes, in this film Bergman freely introduces shots that defeat any literal realism in order to suggest possible or smoldering feelings that are true to some effect situation without becoming overt in a character's behavior. Ray is another towering film director whose responses to a woman are delicate and revolutionary in Tagorean sense of the word. In the film Aparajito, the mother of the child Apu is quite young when her husband dies. A relatively rich neighbor makes some overture to her but she responds strongly and defeats his antagonist impulse. Tarkovsky seems concerned to save the nature and begs on the knee of a female protagonist to save this earth. In his last film, The Sacrifice, he is religiously worried to save mankind. Technology explosion is simply a metaphor in this film. Interesting facts. In the film, Aparajito, the mother of the child Apu, is quite young when her husband dies. A relatively rich neighbor makes some overture to her but she responds strongly and defeats his antagonist impulse. Films that entertain only. In classics, women issues were discussed in luminous simplicity and not in terms of mere body. But in almost all films that entertain people, the bodies of the women are exhibited to satisfy the pleasure instinct of the audience. Either she is shown as tortured or shown as heroine. She is there with a fit and attractive body to impress people. If it goes with sexual activities, it is satisfy the libido of the audience. That creates the term scopophilia. These films are in bulk. Most of the films are like that in Hindi, in English, in South Indian language, in Bengalis. These films are in bulk. India produces the largest number of such films in the world. Serious Indian filmmakers showed them the other path, the other face of cinema by going beyond the female body. There is a long list of such persons who created quality films such as Ray, Rithu Ghatak, Minal Sen, Bimal Roy, Tapan Sinha, Rishika Samkarji, Guru Dutta, Adu Gopal Krishnan, G. Arvindan, Basu Bhattacharya, Basu Chatterjee, Janu Barua, Ketan Mehta, Jabbar Patel, M. S. Sathyu, Shyam Benegal, Apuna Sen, Vijaya Mehta, Sai Paranjape, Gautam Ghosh, Buddhadev Das Gupta, Mani Kaul, Ritupana Ghosh and others. In their films, we never see an item girl dancing on an item song. People need good ideas. A filmmaker offers what people want and does not satisfy their needs and a serious filmmaker never offers what people think as their sexual want. It is a fact that a film is a visible compendium of some moving images, though seem real on the screen, can never satisfy the biological need of the audience. It can bring forth suggestions to solve individual and social problems. It does. It did and it can do in more ratios if the larger section of the audience is ready to understand the importance of ideas that eliminate our minds and hearts. Quality films point to higher life and still entertain. 
entertaining films never think for the quality. The present oft-heard and oft-spoken dialogue by the audience that come out from the mouth of the heroine in the film Dabang is like that. Maar se nahi, pyar se dar lagta hai sahib. And we know what is pyar in an ordinary commercial Hindi film. Even the lyrics in Hindi cinema nowadays such as Kajrare Kajrare or Bidi Jalele insult the poets and lyricists. Interface of film and society in symbolic words. Mulway observes that there are three different looks associated with cinema. That of the camera as it records the fine filmic event. That of the audience as if as it watches the final product and that of the characters looking at each other within the screen. The structure of looking in narrative film contains a contradiction. In Indian mainstream cinema, one always feels intuited when one finds nothing serious or one finds reality distorted for the sake of entertainment, especially in the case of women. Abusive language, what usually we find in lower sections of the society, has never been in Indian mainstream films. But now it is in fashion to show part of sexual and violent life in the films. Showing women as a sex object has become part of filmmaking. Therefore, to abuse a woman in a scene is not an issue. The limitations of censor board are there. When asked to a young Hindi film director who claims to be a student of money call and uses abusive words in almost all scenes full of violence, he replied, only some words are written as non-parliamentary in the screenplay, but when an actor is in full emotion in order to enhance the scene, he adds more that is quite natural. Each and every word is a symbol in cinema. Word can be replaced by an image and vice versa. But what it means in a particular sequence, with what intention, is the point. Language is, in fact, a language system in cinema, such as the use of montage. When approaching the cinema from the linguistic point of view, as Metz points out, it is different, it is difficult to avoid shuttling back and forth between two positions. The cinema as a language is different from verbal language. In a quality film, we find the interlace between film and society designed as a language and in mainstream films, Hollywood or Bollywood, the interlace is merely a verbal one. In art language, one cannot use word or image to promote female body just for sex or pressure. This is only possible when one is unable to utilize cine language and when one is stuck in verbal language. The reflection of society in films and the power of audience to reciprocate go dim because cinema as a medium is then bereft of cinema language, it is then not a cinema. So we must have learned two important things about cinema. There cannot be commercial cinema and art cinema. We usually term cinema as art cinema. We convey some meanings, but art cinema cannot be a term because filmmaking itself is an art, screenplay writing is an art, cinematography is an art, editing is an art, everything is an art, it is an art medium. So art cinema is a wrong term. There can be two kinds of cinema. One is that which reproduced reality, like if there is uh, something happened in the society and we make a film on the base of that reality cinematically that is termed as commercial cinema. Hmm? Some stories are there, some novels are there, some ideas are already there and we are designing making a film on that particular idea or a novel that is simply commercial cinema. The second type of cinema is termed as classic cinema, means cinematography, the cinematic art, the cinematic language which, which is different from all fine arts, from drama, from painting, from dance, from music, from sculpture, from all art, cinematography, the camera work, not photography. So cinematography waits for its own poets its own seers. So a poet 
with a vision tries to share his own idea, his own world, his own poetic world different to this real world, cannot resemble with this real world and portrays through cinema art his own poetic world called poetic cinema or the cinema of classics. There are so many poetic filmmakers, there are so many classic filmmakers such as um, Ingmar Bergman, Robert Bresson, um, Andrei Tarkovsky, Christoph Kislowski, Bergman is from Sweden, Bresson is from France, Tarkovsky is from Russia and Kislowski is from Poland. Though they know the, all the nuances of filmmaking from the Hollywood, but they share their poetic views through the cinema art. They developed the cinema art language. In Russia, we know the basic theoreticians of cinema, the, the important cinema theoreticians such as Pudovkin and Eisenstein, but Tarkovsky never follows the ascetic principles of Eisenstein's or the principle of montage from the Pudovkin. He develops his own ideas after the silent films of Dovichenko. Similarly, Bergman develops his ideas after the silent films made by his ideal director whom he introduced in his film The Wild Strawberries, hmm? Victor Sojistrom. He develops his own point of view. So when there is a particular idea with a classic filmmaker such as Bergman or Tarkovsky, we can see cinema language is in the process of development. For example, Bergman uses extreme close shots in his films and if there is a female face, we can see the mind of the face. In persona, we see the face of Levulman, one actor and the next actor, the face of the B.B. Anderson, where we find the psychology of the same soul with two faces. And we, in a particular scene, we see the half face of Lee Woolman and half face of B.B. Anderson joining together, becoming, making a one single face. That is the language of Bergman in a classic cinema. That is how to portray the psychology of the women soul, the women cycle, the women psyche. So cinema language has been developed as well as we focus our own intention towards the women, to the women, bereft of the pleasure principle, the scopophilia. So classic cinema is another part, is the important part, has to be developed. It act, always gives light to the entire cinema to the Hollywood cinema, to the Bollywood cinema, to the Tollywood cinema. Because if they were not there, the mainstream cinema would not have been developed. So uh, we already discussed and understood that what is classic cinema and what is commercial cinema, what is the difference between these two genres and cinema or we can say the masters of this classic cinema, they are, they himself are the genres of cinema like Bresson, like Kurosawa, like Tarkovsky, like Bergman, like Satyajit Ray, they were the genres and one has to overcome the genre to simulate the, uh, to create the own language of characters, the classic cinema. This is the journey of cinematic language in cinema which portrays the face, the mind, the psyche, the soul of female and the feminine principle. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this model. The real structure of society can be reflected artistically in a film, but it fails when the structure of cinema is devoid of cine language. That is why a film fails to portray the real mind and heart of a woman. It depicts women as she is dwelling in the language of ordinary and lower section of the society. Thank you.